Hi everyone, I'm Jennifer, the host of Ikigai with Jennifer Shinkai, where we're going to talk about the Japanese concept of Ikigai or living a life of purpose. Here you're going to hear inspirational stories from all different types of people who are finding their own life of purpose. You're going to hear about how they found their Ikigai and what they do every day to live an integrated life. So without further ado, let's dive right in. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to Ikigai with Jennifer Shinkai. I am your host, Jennifer Shinkai, and with me today, looking absolutely fabulous, I can't wait till this comes out on YouTube, is Yuri Maijima. But you have a different professional name, right? So people can find you under Michelle Yuri, is right? Yes. 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 But mm. Yuri Maijima, um, I have seen her work after going to um, an amazing event from my friend Raina, who is a voice actress and a singer and generally awesome talent. Um, and it was this kimono event, um, but not a regular kimono event, something <laughs> new, something different. And I was so impressed with the styling. And I was like, who did this? Who did this? And it was Yui. So I started to follow you on Instagram. And I very quickly slid into your DMs and said, hey, tell me about how you became a kimono stylist, because it's absolutely fascinating. And we had a little chat. And here we are today to hear about your story. Um, it's so interesting that, you know, you were born in, in Yokohama and then moved to America and going to community college and becoming like a systems engineer, but in that timing, then discovering kimono. So like traveling outside of Japan was almost what connected you much more to your Japanese identity, which is so fascinating. And as someone who um, is living outside my, uh, my native culture, um, interesting to think about what do I uh, enjoy more about the UK now I'm not living there but now you're back in Japan and working mm -hmm. as a, a neo kimono stylist right very very cool yeah. stuff so we're going to get all into this and talk about it um, and very interested to see the uh, the role that fashion plays in your ikigai, the role that, um, you know, discovering your identity more through fashion and kimono, um, how that gives you a sense of ikigai, as well as talking a little bit about doing something different from your teacher, doing something different from people's uh, social expectation. Uh, how that might come up when people are trying to apply maybe a new type of a new uh, sense of ikigai to their life. So that's kind of the journey we have lined up. But mm -hmm. why don't you tell us a little bit, Yuri, about that? You, was kimono always part of your life as like a young girl in Japan? No. <laughs> like for me, when I was... 10 years old. Mm. You know, in Japan, we have Shichigo-san. Yeah. You may know. And I have younger sister. And she became seven years old. So she wear the kimono. And my grandparents love kimono. So I also wear kimono. And at that time, I had sick because it's too tight oh i feel sick mm. so it was like a celebration but i couldn't eat oh this is my frog <laughs> <laughs> five o'clock everyone <laughs> right. and there was like uh, we went to you know good restaurant to eat for celebration but i couldn't eat anything because I feel sick. So from that time, I hate kimono. I hate to wearing kimono. I decided to not wear kimono forever at wow. 10 years old. Wow. So <laughs> and, and that's how I start with my kimono. 
<laughs> so your first experience was pretty pretty traumatic so I, I'm thinking maybe as a good takeaway from that is like just because you hated something when you were 10 years old and it was really bad doesn't mean in the future you have a different introduction it might be the source of ikigai so how did you shift then how did you shift from being kimono hater to <laughs> kimono stylist you wear kimono yeah. every day yeah yeah I started to like interested in kimono was you know seijinski. Mm. My like I <clears throat> I was in um what was it like a semongaku kind of like an English semongaku. It's like a vocational school, and seijinski mm -hmm. is the coming of age celebration at twenty. Mm -hmm. Just for any listeners who don't catch mm -hmm. that. <laughs> I was in that school and then I got the one friend. She is like older than me. And I said, I don't want to wear hoodie so that for kimono because of the bad imagination. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but my that older friend told me, you should wear for your parents and also grandparents it's not only for you if you wear it they're gonna help you so i, I decided to go to wear like free sode and go to the free sode shop mm. and it was quite good experience like i just love the design that's it but very simple but i really love the how it looks like and how it feel good. Okay. It's really different. So mm. that's the first changing from right. that bad image. Mm. Mm. Uh, what's, can you just describe, because I have no kimono knowledge. Mm -hmm. uh, so mm -hmm. the difference of a furisode kimono, what's special about it? It's usually longer sleeves. Right. Like, I have like this stone. But it's like almost your height. Your height. It's really it's, it's, height. Yeah, I can say height, but yeah. you know, it's not touched up brown. Okay. But it's really long. Very long sleeves. Okay. Um, and the design is very formal. Mm. And I, it's kind of difficult to explain by, you know, <laughs> <laughs> but it's like if you open the kimono, it's like a one painting, big painting. Mm. So it's like a, you are wearing artwork. Wow, wearing artwork, so, gorgeous. So gorgeous. that's the formal types of kimono. Like this one is the pattern, right? You can see. Right. Yeah, or, you know, we called Kosigara. It looks like Czech design. Okay, so it's a very simple mm. everyday yeah. wear. Yes. Yeah. but former one is more like a painting looking right so mm. you wore that for your uh i was gonna say 20th anniversary your coming of age <laughs> ceremony <Yeah>. at 20 <laughs> um a little bit for your family mm -hmm. uh, not mm -hmm. only for yourself so maybe interesting mm -hmm. advice from your your senpai there mm -hmm. um but also you had this changed experience with this yeah different mm -hmm. different dress and so and then what happened <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I was planning to go to USA mm. as a community college student. Um, when that was the before I'm going to the college, mm. and after the anniversary, I went to the college. Like, like same year, I think. Right. And I start learn how to wear yukata. Okay, that it's is like a casual, yeah. Yes, most casual one, but like, I think most Japanese people wear yukata. It's for the summer kimono. Yeah. And almost everyone wear for, you know, having fun. So I landed because I was in uh, near the San Diego. So it's quite the hot weather play. So it's enough to learn yukata. It's just for, you know, something I can exp 
explain about my culture. Okay. Mm. Right. And uh, in the US, I have not really into the kimono, but I really noticed that I really lucky to be Japanese. And I started to know how Japan is really good country. So I used to love, I, I still love the fashion. So I love fashion. So I pick something Japanese and fashion. Hmm. So that was kimono. Right. Hmm. And so I also, there is a lot of U.S. people loves Japan. Right. And they know Japan more than me. <laughs> <laughs> it makes me feel a little like jealous. I don't know oh. that right. Oh, they know Japan more than me, even I'm Japanese. That makes me feel weird. And <laughs> that's what I decide. I want to do something, one thing become a professional and I choose kimono because I love fashion right oh I love mm. that so the the first <laughs> motivation was kind of hang on for <laughs> a minute that, that makes me feel weird that you know more about this aspect of my culture than me I'm gonna show you I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna learn something can be be an expert in it mm -hmm. and it aligned with like your love of fashion and then uh, yeah, kimono. But yeah, kimono, maybe this is jumping ahead a little bit. Kimono not really <laughs> held for me as like a high fashion, right? Or even fashionable. It has a kind of older ladies image or like very formal. You only wear it at a wedding or tea ceremony. But you know, kimono fashion, um, I know that this is changing because of people like mm. you. Um, mm -hmm. But kimono and, and like contemporary fashion were not connected for a long time. So, so tell me about how you mm -hmm. have, have connected, you know, the traditions of kimono with your contemporary fashion eye. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good question. But, you know, I, it's quite easy if you start learning kimono more and more i think a lot of people feel like i want to wear not only special occasion mm. but like more daily occasion and if you start wearing the daily kimono you will notice that kimono is not old fashion and how i find out is like ukiyo-e yeah. If you have seen ukiyo-e, ukiyo -e is like um wood, like woodblock printing, right? Mm -hmm. Like a print. Mm. Yeah. So like hokusai is the famous. Yeah, the famous and one. We, we're both sumidaku, right? So mm -hmm. <laughs> oh boy, yeah. and that was the event. That was the event that I joined yeah. with the hokusai. So so tell me, so ukiyo -e, so uh, woodblock printing is like yes. Mm. Especially in the Edo era, their kimono is really, really fashionable. Mm. Not like the traditional or the old looking. It was like quite brand new, modern style for me. Mm. And yeah. also we have the photos from Meiji era or Taisho era. They Oh, they are doing like something like this. Someone wearing really short kimono mm. with the Western shoes, like a pumps. Yeah. It's already exists. So I just noticed that, oh, we, it's used to modern, I shouldn't say modern, but it, it was just a clothes. So it was just a fashion for, yeah you know, all day. So I find out that and I start changing my styling from traditional to more modern. Mm. Yeah. That's how I find out. 
right so almost that uh, the it, kimono was always contemporary daily fashion mm -hmm. but somehow there was a period where what it meant and how it was taught and how it was held it got kind of stuck <laughs> stuck <laughs> in the past and then what you're doing with your styling is going actually let's it's it is i mean kimono is only wearing thing right is what it translates yeah, to yeah. yes if yeah. you translate kanji it's a uh, wearing thing so. <laughs> so, just clothes <laughs> just clothes <laughs> um not any rules not any way it has to be mm -hmm. um but I remember when we were talking, you mm -hmm. mentioned um, a little bit, we were talking about the concept of uh, shuhari, and maybe mm -hmm. my pronunciation is strange there, um, but how, you know, you you got a professional license, right? Yes, kind of. <laughs> yeah, Tell, so, could you, so you studied mm -hmm. and then you kind of broke the rules. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, maybe, but you know, my teacher was quite open minded, I think. But mm. actually she never looked like this change. <laughs> <laughs> but she wear more daily kimono because she wear kimono every day. Mm. So she, I think she like she's having let's say New Year party. Yeah. Then she wear a good wear, formal kimono. Yeah. But when I meet her, she wearing daily kimono. Mm. So I think she understand the, what the difference between the daily kimono and the formal kimono. But right. of course, she really don't know <laughs> how I changed a lot. <laughs> I think, I don't know. We didn't meet her for a long time so she feel a little surprised but she's always like you look nice that's hmm. that's she always told me when she teach how to wear kimono and mm. i i feel like in my experience in like japanese mm -hmm. culture if people think i don't look nice Mm -hmm. they're not going to tell me they're just not going to say anything about how I look uh. <laughs> just no comment if they hate it no comment mm -hmm. um but so yeah you look nice is like okay this is approved mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah so I, yeah I like that that you said yeah she she doesn't say yeah it's amazing I love it but she also never says no which is right, right. really important mm -hmm. as a teacher right yes and she said her way is always, I don't like it. But she still say, you look good. But like, there's a way to wear, there's a, a lot of different way to wear obi. Mm. So there's a one style she don't like. But I think my mother wanted to learn from her. So she asked her, how to wear, we call it Ginza Musubi. Okay. Sounds fancy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but for her, it is like the how kimono for Mizu Shobai. Do you not understand Mizu Shobai? I do. So but we have to translate <laughs> yeah. this. So yeah. Mizu Shobai is um, like water service, kind of, but it basically <laughs> means like kind of for prostitutes and sort of sexual it, it, services mm -hmm. workers it's, sexual uh, workers it's workers that's what i'm trying uh, to say sex workers i don't think I we use the word know. prostitute anymore. yeah 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 so you know there's a ginza have the kurabu mm. it's not really sexual worker but you know men and women things right yeah, yeah. so they wear the ginza musubi style ah okay. so she said I don't like it means right. because of that. <laughs> because she, when you wear it, people make assumptions about what type of woman you are. Yes. So I don't want my students to be in these difficult situations. Mm -hmm. where people... Now, my question is, um, mm -hmm. knowing that 
<laughs> Sorry, guys, this is not going to be a great comment for guys. You know, knowing that so often uh, mm. men don't even realize like you've had your hair cut. Um, mm. Do men really notice the Ginza Musabi or is it other kimono wearing women who will be judging? Mm. Not really. <laughs> uh, I have never experienced only because of the Ginza Musabi. So I think not judging from the kimono people but mm. but i think if you wear daily kimono with ginza musumi it looks like not that kind of person at all so it's really different right so it makes people who know go well that's what... yeah hmm. even nobody noticed maybe someone think let's look nice or different right mm. so that's when she told my mother to how to wear Ginza Musumi, she said, I don't like it. But anyway, she told her. So right. that's how, how mm. she thinks. Yeah. Mm. She'll still teach it. She still does it. <laughs> but she lets people know it's not really my thing. But here's <laughs> the knowledge. Those are <laughs> away you go. Interesting. <laughs> she sounds great. I'm sure she's <laughs> very proud of you. Um, so tell, tell us a little bit about your styling mm -hmm. business right now, like mm -hmm. how, how it connects to your ikigai, how you feel when you're styling your ikigai can. Mm -hmm. For me, the styling is the making, uh, let's say, making someone or does someone find themselves? Mm. So I want, I want them to meet like new style of yourself, and it makes me really happy. If it's not, I I'm happy if they said it looks nice. It's still happy, but I really love to hear they said. Oh, it's really different, but it looks nice on me. That makes me really good. <laughs> I love it. I just got uh, goosebumps. I got Torihada. <laughs> wow. So that, yeah, it looks nice. That's great. But when you have like opened the door mm. to a new uh, expression of themselves mm -hmm. through your styling and what you, how yeah. you dress them. Yes, yes. Wow. And I don't want them to feel uncomfortable or how can I say? Do you understand? I don't. How can mm. I say? Like, you don't wear it. You are like kimono was wear. Yes. Okay, got it, got it. <laughs> yes. Like, um, so it's that the clothes are wearing you. Oh, right, right. right? You're not wearing the clothes. The clothes are wearing you. That's right. Got it. I don't like it. So. Right. Mm. So it has to feel that the clothes are enhancing or amplifying or showing something rather than yeah. you're just like the coat hanger. Mm -hmm. Exactly. It's, right. It has to be part of that person. Mm. that's a very important part for me right mm. and how how does your process work you know if someone's like what stylist like what how who comes to you who are your customers and how do you take them through the the styling process uh -huh. i usually get the uh, by sns recently mm. yeah but i used to i didn't open it it right now but i used to having the service on airbnb uh -huh. for the experience. You know, experience yes mm. so but right now i don't have any place to do it so i cannot do it for the the tourist mm. because they don't have kimono right? <laughs> right. i have you but you know it's quite difficult so recently I'm usually doing, if someone send me a message, 
that I'm going to their house. Right. And I mm. really want to mm. use their kimono. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Because a lot of Japanese people have not their own kimono, but like family have it usually. So I'm, you know, taking out their closet and dress sometime. But of course, if they don't have kimono, I can take it to them. Or sometime the performer or dancers ask me to do the styling for the show performance. Mm. A little different, but, you know, basically the same things I'm doing. I love that idea that you're, you know, taking those family kimonos as well. Because in our, um, when we originally chatted about this podcast, we talked a little bit about sustainability and that mm. kimono was kind of the ultimate <laughs> yes. sustainable, gender free, size yes. free. Yes. Yeah. So how, how do you find um, people when they start to, start to wear like their their family kimono how do, do people get emotional does it have any different kind of impact uh, a, a lot of people like find out their memories that's what i feel when i talk it is from my grandmother uh, and they kind of like remember not too emotional but you know feel good of mm. course and that's always I feel yes and what else and they I think they find out it's up to how many kimono or what kind of kimono they have it's a little different but if you find daily kimono, then they do remember, yes, my grandmother wear kimono every day used to, something like that. Mm. They so, remember. Yeah, mm. so they see, oh yeah, and I remember that like this, this reminds me of her mm -hmm. at this age in this way. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like I've seen some of the, the costumes that you have made for performances, obviously. And um, I feel like you've done quite a lot of reform <laughs> to these uh, things. So do you do that with clients' kimonos as well? You know, kind of chopping them up and restyling in that way? Oh, actually, I, you know, it's so good that kimono, you don't need to cut. Oh. I just put the Western clothes inside of kimono mm. and sew them. But I, I always use kimono as kimono. Right. You That's, never, you never uh, cut. So it's always no. just maybe restitched in a different way or how it's with the belt, with the obi? Yes, but I still doing the, the traditional obi mm. style always. But yeah. the, how I dress... It's quite, sometimes it's quite new, but I kind of having that idea from ukiyo-e. Mm. Wow, that's how they wear. So it's not really super different things. Sometimes mm. it is brand new style, but not always. So... It's always kimono I'm using. Mm. Mm. Interesting. So you're not mm. chopping. You're just like laying it on the body in a different, <laughs> unexpected way. And then mm -hmm. like, you know, today you have a different top on underneath, mm -hmm. maybe like with mm -hmm. a pair of jeans, something yes. unexpected. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I remember actually in the, the show that we saw, I think my favorite styling that I felt like mm -hmm. I might wear that um mm -hmm. there was one which was kind of um almost uh, do you know the japanese brand amavel oh my god amavel is kind of um kind of maidy but sort of victorian 
And you had a lady with like a high collar and she had little mm-hmm. boots on and it was like um, a dark, like burgundy, or like mm-hmm. a dark red. Oh, and a cereal. This oh, did she wear that fascinator? There you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. And I was yeah. like, that's it. And it was just the waist was like kind of hourglass. It was really, um, mm-hmm. yeah, really like, wow, that's like, that feels very now. <laughs> <laughs> there was some also other really cool stuff but I just was remembering that one very specifically going I could yeah um yeah they go now you know my kimono <laughs> neo kimono <laughs> sense <laughs> yes yes yeah um well what's the favorite thing that you've you've designed that like the the one you're the most proud of so far in your career favorite mm. piece of styling <laughs> thank you mm. You said what? Your your favorite styling, the one that you're uh-huh. like, oh, that was I, I did a great job. I was so happy with that. Oh, uh, that's I know it's hard to choose your favorite <laughs> child, kind of. <laughs> yeah, the one you choose one. It was like actually that is the kimono code. Mm-hmm. So we called Michiyuki. And a lot of second hand kimono coat was thrown away because they don't want a lot of coat for you know like they just need like kimono people only needed two or three kimono coat so actually i kind of proud of that styling mm. it's like a make it one piece yeah yeah and it's i think Anyone can wear that style because you you don't need an obi for the kimono coat and it's like snap. Everything is like a snap button. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's easy to wear not only for Japanese, for anyone. Mm. And you just wear it and put the belt on. Oh. It's not have to be obi. I think I put the belt for that style yeah. on the store. So yeah, I kind of like proud of that styling. <laughs> <laughs> I, I chose a good one then. <laughs> yes, it was. I'm proud of it too. It was so beautiful, <laughs> so good to see. I really want to save Michiyuki cord, the kimono cord. Mm. So I don't want people to throw it away. It's still a good silk, and you know there's a way how to use it. So that's why I'm. Right. Love it. So if anyone listening has the kimono coats they find <laughs> in their grandmother's closet or wherever, <laughs> don't throw them away. Send um, them all to Yui. No, don't send them all to Yui, <laughs> but don't throw them away. They can be they can be used. Right. Um, yes. Wonderful. Um, I want to talk a little bit um something that you said about mm-hmm. one of the challenges of kind of integrating your ikigai um and yeah what's been what's been what's been difficult for you around that topic to integrate ikigai Mm. Mm. (laughs) actually i don't remember the difficult part but at least though sometime i'm uh, kind of lost what I really want because I used to be just a kitsukeshi. Kitsukeshi is just a, someone who dressed a kimono to someone. Mm. And I still have that job and I really like it. But like there is the set of kimono and I just dress down and if I'm become <laughs> kitsukeshi I forget not forget but I'm kind of become kitsukeshi not stylist but I think kitsukeshi still should be stylist because how you dress makes their looks different so that's a little difficult maybe Mm. but other things integrate integrate 
I, I, I just, just mm. I just follow <laughs> what I want to do. That's why I'm here. So yeah. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I, maybe I just don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I like that. Um, I just want to uh, give an observation on the Kitsukeshi. It, it almost mm -hmm. sounds like it's, it feels for you a mm -hmm. little bit like, um, you know, transactional, like just I'm just putting on the thing which is there step by step, follow the process. But maybe what's important to you, Yui, is about bringing your originality and bringing, as you said, that you said what you love about your job as a stylist mm. is I'm able to like reveal mm. this something they didn't know about themselves. But mm. if I just say to you, dress me in this, mm -hmm. there's no opportunity for me to get any new insight in who I am. Mm -hmm. I just, I'm repeating, which mm. if that's what I want is fine. But for yes. you... What you want to get out of the exchange is different, right? So maybe yeah. there's place for both. There's place for Kitsukeshi and there's a place for this stylist who reveals a new part, right? Mm -hmm. Bo both are necessary in the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I think yes. it's, it's really smart that you, you see that like hunger in yourself to mm -hmm. do this other thing. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, that's different. And also because of my 10 years old experience, mm. it's not only dressing kimono, it's how you feel is also important. Yes. Mm. Mm. And sometimes people think, oh, your kimtsuke is not, not tight. Yeah, you do it so, a little bit, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's comfortable mm. that's that's good part i think for people who wear kimono mm. yeah yeah to be that yeah mm. <laughs> mm. yeah i tend to have um a lot of padding when i wear even my <laughs> yukata so mm. i don't i don't like that that i go from kind of medihari <laughs> curvy to uh block <laughs> uh, to a rectangle <laughs> So uh -huh. if you maybe we can talk later. We can have the <laughs> advice for um oh no, but maybe talk now. Like what's you know, with that, I have an image, right? That to have mm -hmm. a kimono body, I have the wrong body for kimono. I think mm -hmm. you're gonna tell me that that's not true. Mm -hmm. That's not true. <laughs> that, <laughs> that is it's just my opinion, but I think after the I don't know when. The Western clothes become the, you know, daily clothes for Japan. Mm. But when it's changing, they, the kimono, let's say, shop, start to think about how to sell the kimono. Mm. So they try to sell the kimono to one by one. Like, you this kimono is for you so this is this size is, is for you so this kimono is for you so it's like the order made things mm. but kimono is not for one person it's the shape is for everyone right so if i think this kimono you can wear too because mm. you can change by how to wear is changed by kids care. Mm. So they started to <laughs> uh, they started saying you your size is this. Right. Mm. And also they made this is the correct way to wear kimono. Mm. And because the kimono is always like a straight, like no, not like Western clothes have their you know body shape, yeah. right? Mm. But kimono shape is always just a fabric. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no curves. Uh, it's easy to make straight body. Yeah, I think it's easy to make the image kind of. 
<laughs> can imagine imagine what it would look like on a straight body uh -huh. with a straight piece of fabric yeah mm -hmm. mm. and you know then they can have a student who you know how to wear kimono cross right. and they can tell so that's how i change i think so mm. of course all the time they don't put any towels or you know they wear just every day they don't right. do that for yeah. sure yeah yeah because <laughs> i'm like i've got this like tire around me to like fill in this curve of my yeah. like hourglass <laughs> yeah the people surely didn't do that every day it's kind of mm. weird but i suppose you know on the other hand we you know the same mm -hmm. thing in western fashion right there's a sample size for models mm -hmm. and then anyone who's kind of outside of that size mm -hmm. then it's it's a challenge right i mean and again changing and, and improving mm -hmm. in terms of inclusivity of size but understanding it's not just like add a few a few mm -hmm. centimeters here a few centimeters there um yeah it falls different on the body mm -hmm. so some people might be uh -huh. saying, uh -huh. a source of ikigai just clothes isn't it how can it be so tell me about like what you what you know what fashion means to you in terms of having a sense of ikigai having a sense of like enjoying your life how does it how does fashion support that for you oh okay uh, for me fashion is the easiest way to one of the easiest way to show yourself i think mm. because you know it's not have to be kimono for me yeah if it's western clothes that's fine because you just can buy it right Mm. like let's say artwork painting yeah Some people feel like i'm not good at it but yeah fashion is you know you just pick something you like and wear it and if you wear it it's your style right right that's quite easy to show express your self mm. Mm, yeah. that's how i think about ikigai with you know fashion things mm. yeah i love that the easiest way to express yourself and who you are mm -hmm. i i feel like it's um can be such a mood changer for me mood change it changes my mood uh -huh. oh. depending on what i wear and use of color texture <laughs> fabric uh -huh. accessories mm -hmm. Mm. um yeah so I always every time I've you know interacted with you or like seen you on your Instagram just your yeah the expression is so joyful mm -hmm. like just to look at you like makes me happy <laughs> <laughs> you know like wow like look how she's picked up the red and the earring and this bit. like mm -hmm. oh you know it's like the thoughtfulness is what um mm. i appreciate about like seeing in other people as well like seeing beautiful style on other people mm -hmm. as like an observer of them mm -hmm. is really really joyful for me too makes mm -hmm. me makes me feel happy to see <laughs> yeah other people look good too mm -hmm. yeah. yeah and i think that's um it's kind of like back to the idea of how do you get people to see a new a new part of themselves yeah. Mm -hmm. yes yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah that's one of the maybe with a lot of online shopping we miss that experience but I know that I always used to if I would go shopping mm -hmm. if I was feeling kind of stuck in a rut mm -hmm. just go and try on something I would never buy <laughs> like that I'm too old for it or like it's not my color it's not my style and maybe yeah I'll still say the same thing <laughs> but just try it on and go oh who is the person who wears this I don't know whatever it, whatever it is <laughs> yeah I think that especially the color mm. Japan, uh, Japan has so different colors mm. so a lot of people say like I'm not good at pink but there's a bunch of different kind of pink so there's always one pink 
good on someone. Right. So I always tell the people saying something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Like you're not good at pastel pink, but maybe mm. like a hot pink or a magenta. Mm. It's going to be working. Yeah. Mm. Love that. So don't again, just because you wore a tight kimono once and felt sick <laughs> doesn't mean you can't wear one. Just because you looked horrible right. in like candy floss pink doesn't mean that all pinks are, are bad for mm -hmm. you. And what do you think it's going to be, you know, yeah, 2023 fashion trends in your styling? What are you looking forward to? Uh, I want to do more of the going someone's house and dress the their kimono and mm. also with their fashion. So I always, I never ever <laughs> did a fashion magazine or I always focused on the one person. Mm. And I just, oh, but I just started the Furisode and the Hakama lentil so i i don't know how it's gonna be but i'm more focused on the one person right. not fashion style mm. so taking people like getting those family heirlooms those old kimono mm -hmm. and bringing them out of the closet <laughs> <laughs> into the world it's the saddest thing i think of those beautiful kimono just folded in yeah, the pantsu in the drawer mm -hmm. they need and to breathe yeah <laughs> sometimes there is the cubby oh they get moldy yeah, yeah because mm. they just put it in and do nothing so it's yes it's quite sad so i really want to get out from the pansu and close it and just where it helped the breeze the kimono yeah so that's better to wear just wear it yeah that's a great <laughs> great piece of advice i think that's, that's the same with so many things when we just leave them don't touch them for a long time they the object like loses its life like yes, um yes. yeah so clothes and houses Yes. Recently in uh, Sumidaku, you know, we had the Kyojima Expo mm -hmm. and there was an old house and it hadn't been lived in for a few years, but exactly. very short period of time it hadn't been lived in. It was old, but they said that as soon as the person moved out, it was like mm -hmm. the house lost its heart. Yes. yes. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So even, even houses and kimono have their ikigai and they mm -hmm. need to be they need to be worn they need to be yes used. yes yeah. yes yeah yeah of course since we're getting very philosophical conversation <laughs> of the in the a very uh almost the shinto uh, uh the, energy, the energy in the clothes mm. um the energy in the house amazing um there was one other thing i did want to ask you about yes when we talked about the challenge and i think you'd mentioned that like you like to you just do your own thing and do your own way um and I know that some people especially in Japanese culture find that quite challenging to like stick out or to um yeah to kind of be a gaijin I guess in a way to be a bit different um mm -hmm. and you mentioned before you feel like it's it's changing a little so could you share a little bit about your experience with you know going the different way to a other people doing what you want uh you mean how i change yeah like how how you do that when everyone is saying like oh you shouldn't do it that way or uh there's a big big thing was the higashi nihon daishinsai the the uh, great earthquake in march 11th march 11th Yes. Is that 2000? 2011, I think. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. It's 10 years from there. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I was in Tokyo, and I just feel like, wow, I can 
be dead any time. I feel like that. So I have to do something I really wanted to do. Mm. I think that's it. <laughs> I just changed my mind. Oh, I have to do something I wanted to do. I don't know when I'm going to die. So then I started to learn how to do the hair makeup. Yeah. Because first time I thought I'm become just a kitsukeshi. Then I, if I can do hair set, it's going to help my career. Mm. But it was the beginning of how I started to follow what I want to do. And after that, I don't know, when I change, I start to meet people, someone like me. And sometimes they already do it. So I feel like I have, oh, I can do it. Or, you know, I really fly uh, of what the people who really do what they want. I really like them, so I just follow them, kind of. So you can see, like, a role model, or an, I'm sure those people don't want to be seen as role model. I'm, I'm just doing what I want, but, oh, hang on. You just give me permission to do what mm -hmm. I want to do. I see that you are doing it, so mm -hmm. maybe that's a possibility for me, too. So mm -hmm. more people who are doing the things that they want to do and showing that it's possible inspire someone else and it can yeah, move forward. Yeah. I think we, oh. yeah, we have a little technical, hang on. Are we back? Oh, yeah. <laughs> We're yes, all right yeah. now. <laughs> oh, not yet. Okay. Yeah, so, so inspiring for everyone. Yeah. So giving, <laughs> giving permission um, to other mm -hmm. people by doing our own things. And I, I love your point there, Yuya. I think it's a great kind of way to, to think about um, life, actually. Like we just don't know how much yeah. we've got time we've got left. We don't know. We don't know. Mm -hmm. And I think living in Japan, you, it's really, that's kind of in the, in the air. Mm. Uh, any any moment and especially living in Sumidaku we are deep in the hazard map so we live <laughs> dangerously <laughs> many things um and I think just yeah to to grab each day do what we want uh, to do yes and I think I the COVID-19 mm. I think it changed people's mind a little bit similar to me Maybe some people feel like, oh, I have to do something I wanted to do. So maybe someone do understand this entry. Yes, mm. definitely. Mm -hmm. As a coach, as a coach, yeah. and question <laughs> inquiries that I get around this podcast. Mm -hmm. I, I agree with your uh, opinion on that. Topic. Mm -hmm. So Yui, I have two more questions for you. It might end up being three, who knows? But the two more questions I want to ask you. So first of all, is there a question I didn't ask you or a question that some topic you wanted to talk about we didn't get a chance to talk about today? Um, I don't think so. We talk quite a lot. <laughs> <laughs> we covered many things. Okay, great, good. That's, I'm glad I covered everything. Uh, oh no, hang on, uh, go on. <laughs> yeah, it's not something question, but I really want someone to, did you see my Instagram recently? The new one? Oh, I'm going to have a look now. <laughs> <laughs> I think I, yeah, I put it, oh, maybe not. Well, we'll have to share the link for the actual, um, Thing in the show notes but tell me about your inst which particular instagram post i uh, recent just few weeks ago mm. i this my friend she have raised hair raised hair oh yes yes i can see this one yeah <laughs> that is my sorry for the, i'll share the link in the show notes <laughs> for those people who are not on youtube and this is oh, yes good. i I did the Nihongami with braids hair. 
Wow. <laughs> but so unique and mm. very, it's really hot. <laughs> so that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> right. Of. That's what you're, that's what you're looking to do. Mm -hmm. And all of um, Yui's social media, all her links are going to be in the show notes. So please do check mm -hmm. them out. Please follow, give a like. It's such a beautiful um, Instagram feed. I love getting it coming up. Thank and yes, <laughs> boys look so cool. Um, and give you an idea of like, what's this neo kimono stylist that we've been talking about the whole time. Mm -hmm. And I think it will really change um, no, I'm, I'm just scrolling now, so I better put that down. No. Um, it will really change uh, the the audience's view on like what is kimono and how can it be mm -hmm. worn. Um, so my last question is: if you have a final message that you would like to give to listeners of Ikigai with Jennifer Shinkai, the floor is yours, please. Uh, I always say, do it whatever you want. That's that's the message. I think. You, you better do it if you wanted to do it. Wonderful, it. wonderful. Um, so if you've been thinking, should I do it? Should I not? <laughs> Yui tells you, <laughs> Yui Mayajima says, do it whatever you want. You better mm -hmm. do it. I think that's a great message. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for being with us today. I'm really excited to see what happens with your styling in the future. And um, if anyone has kimonos in their tansu, in their closet, and they don't know what to do with them, and they want to see a new side of themselves, then definitely contact Yui about that. Or just to find out more about you know, modern kimono culture in Japan, I think Yui and then probably see as well, you know, who follows her and you can get a whole new <laughs> world. And then maybe the advice to, to other people as well is to like, think about something. There's so many interesting things in our own culture that we take for granted. And what's something which is, um, yeah, maybe if you were gonna go overseas and someone would say, what is something which is unique about your culture? Um, perhaps you could find um, a sense of ikigai, a sense of your identity as well, uh, from reconnecting with that too. So it's yeah. been a wonderful episode. I'm so happy to speak to you. And yeah, good luck with everything in 2023. Yes, thank you.